And on Spotlight today is Nigerian-American Hollywood star Dayo Kenny. He was hosted at the African House in New York where he went to speak about why Africans and people of color must begin to tell their own stories. Afterwards, he spoke with Channel TV's Anne Uwawodo on his rise to stardom and relationship with singer J-Lo, who is a Shades of Blue co-star. Do enjoy. In 2012, Out of the Blues, Nigerian-born and raised actor Dayo Kenny made an appearance in the Lionsgate-produced Hollywood blockbuster Hunger Games. It's an uncommon feat to break into big studio productions in Hollywood, especially when you're within your first year of listing as a professional actor. But for Dayo, it happened in a manner he considers a miracle. You kill her? Just this time, 12. For real. Uh, I had been in LA for about a year, and I was taking this acting class. Jeffrey Tambor was an acting teacher. Well, he's an actor, but he had a, a class that he did, a workshop. And he introduced me to my manager. Um, and so my manager told me that, you know, they wanted to see if I could act and what I could really do. And at, at the time, I didn't have a reel. A reel is basically what you show people to, you know, show your work. I just went with my Lagos confidence and said, you know, I can act. So she told me to go uh, audition with this casting director called Deborah Zane. And she told me that, uh, look, it's for a movie called The Hunger Games. You're never going to get it. Don't try and get it. You're not going to get it. I just want you to audition for her so she can tell us whether you can act or not, what you need to work on, or if you need more presence or confidence or vocate, you know, whatever it is. So I didn't really think I was gonna get the Hunger Games. I just wanted to try to prove to that casting director that I can act so that my manager would sign me. Um, and so one thing led to another, and that tape, audition tape, just kept going up and up the ladder at Lionsgate. Lionsgate was the studio that made that movie. So, you know, they were like, oh, Daniel, she said you can act. So they signed me, and then a week later, like, oh, this producer watched the tape, and then, oh, this producer watched the tape, or this, and, um, and uh, I'm a very religious person. I got the role of Hunger Games on Good Friday, 2012. Yeah, which is pretty, I'll never forget that because of that reason. So it was uh, Good Friday, and I, I got the call that I got the part. So it was kind of this weird, cosmic, beautiful thing that happened, yeah. Born to a Nigerian father from Oyo State and a mother from Kenya, Dayo was raised in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria until age 15 when he moved to America for educational reasons. He, however, found and fell in love with acting. You know, I think I was a little bit crazy, man, honestly, just because I never looked at the fact that I was Nigerian or African as, as a minus. I always looked at it as a plus. I always felt like sooner or later a big studio movie is going to want need an African for something, you know, and I, you know, I, I decided I was not going to change my name, you know, that's one thing that a lot of representatives would tell you when you move to, you know, Hollywood, change your name, and I was like, there's no way, my parents will disown me, you know, I can't change my name, so I, I was like, I'm not going to change my name, and once you make a decision like that, that I'm going to remain Dayo Kinney, it informs every other decision you make, you know, I, I never felt less than, I never felt like there was a role that I couldn't get, I just felt like if you do the work, if you buckle down and just do the work and if your intent is right you know you'll do well and so I just that was my my game plan was just to come and just work as hard as possible so that's how I survived I just hard work and resilience yeah from the Hunger Games Dio continues to add more feathers to his hat as he builds a career in Hollywood with features and movies like Terminator Genesis alongside Arnold Schwarzenegger, Runner Runner with Justin Timberlake and Ben Affleck, and the NBC TV series Shades of Blue alongside Jennifer Lopez. A video game? I thought it was, he just turned it. He pulled a gun. No oh, gun, it was a video game. Where there's drugs, there's a gun. You were first through, squeezed off two rounds. As a suspect fired a second shot. He shot twice? Yes. Breathe, Loman. Breathe. The truth is in the paperwork. And even though he's a strong fan of the singer, he made sure he kept his relationship with J-Lo strictly professional. 
That's my boss. You can have a crush on the boss. That's the yoga. That's the yoga. You have to just hail her and do your work. Yeah. Dio joins the long list of Nigerians in diaspora making impact within the international filming space. Others include Chinwatele Giofo, John Boyega, David Oyelowo, and Hakim Kaya Kazim, to mention a few. He, however, continues to keep tab on the goings-on within the Nigerian filming industry with hopes of partaking in it someday. For them right now, it's just to keep doing what they're doing. I think infrastructure has always been a thing that held Nollywood back a little bit. Um, and if Nollywood was able to persevere through those years of government instability and you know, infrastructure not quite being there, whether it's with power, not having, you know, 24-7 electricity, which is very crucial to do what we do, and they were able to make it happen, I think as that infrastructure starts to get better, the talent is already there. We already have, it's only going to get bigger and better, is what I, what I think. So I think Nollywood should just keep doing what they're doing. They're right on track, you know, and the, the better the infrastructure is, the better our projects are going to be. Yeah. In 2015, he officially became an American citizen, which he celebrated on his social media page. This, however, makes him no less a Nigerian, as he speaks ahead of the coming general elections in Nigeria. You know, I think Nigeria is a great country. I think we're a very wealthy country. And I think our middle class deserves more. Our, our lower class deserves more from our government officials. And I'm just basically asking them to do their jobs. Just do your job and be of service to the people. You know, I think sometimes our politicians forget that they're in the service industry. And I think Nigeria has this very toxic, toxic culture of Oga, the toxic culture of you want to get into your position and you want to be praised. No. If you're a government, if you're a government official, if you're a politician, you get to your position and then you serve. That's really, it's, it's, a, it's a backward thinking. So I think we have to get out of that thinking of, of um, you work hard to get to a position for people to praise you and for people to give you accolades or for people to give you money and wealth. No, you get to that position so you can give back, so you can serve the people. You know, getting, it's funny, I think, I think in Africa or Nigeria, I think government officials feel like the hard work is the campaign and then when they become a minister or a governor or whatever, now they can relax. No, the job just started. So now that you're in a position of power, Look to your community. How can I help? How can I make things better? You know, and if you give, it can only come back. You know, as it, I can only speak about my industry. If we have, if we can fix just power, if we can just fix electricity alone, the ramifications of that are exponential. You know, and the governor, you will make the money back. You know, but it's the idea. Nigeria, I feel like we just have to let go of that idea of me, 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 and we need to start thinking of ourselves as a collective of us, us. You know, yeah.